In this video, I'm going to show you step-by-step -step how to install a N2MB watt box on any car for launch control and those sweet ass flat foot shifts. Let's go. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are, or tonight, we're going to install the N2MB watt box. So that way we'll have two step off the line as well as flat foot shifting. In other words, you hold the gas pedal down, press the clutch in and change gears. So let's go ahead and install this and I'll show you how to hook it up on a 1.8 cruise. And this works for other cars too. You just have to look up the wiring diagram. Let's go. All right, I've got the hot rod pulled in. Hot rod, our 1.8 turbo Chevy Cruze. Been cramming about 30 pounds of boost down this thing. Let's uh, go ahead and install this watt box. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to pull this guy back. Let me go ahead and just pull this off real quick. We'll take this guy off. And we're going to have to disconnect this guy so we can access it. Because we're going to have to tap into the ignition coil. Here's our fancy schmancy watt box here. Here's the controller, the box, your serial to USB, and then your wiring harness. They provide some heat shrink, zip ties, and a little eyelet for your ground. All right, I've got... A welding rod just kind of wrap this thing up with uh so we got the red yellow and orange just wrapped it up on this welding rod with a little electrical tape we'll feed it through the firewall wow all right i did some digging hopefully i'm pretty sure i got this right hopefully so but before i go soldering or anything like that i'm going to hook all this stuff up and then just kind of test it but first let's go ahead and disconnect the ground before i forget there we go just pull this right on through let's see how much slack we have got about another four feet there we go so i think i'm going to mount the watt box eh, there's an airbag there we'll mount it somewhere over here it's close enough these other two wires will stay inside the car one of them goes to the clutch position sensor and the other to the accelerator position sensor then we got a ground which we've got a ground strap up here but let's take care of everything in the engine bay first next thing i'm going to do is take this plastic sheathing connector stuff. I forget what it's called, but we're gonna push this all the way, a little bit through the firewall, and then we'll route everything along with some of those, these other wiring harnesses that I have. I may go under the charge pipe here and then just kind of lay things down here out of the way of the heater hoses. And we'll come up right here to our injector connection. So let's go ahead and do that. got everything nice and routed went ahead and trimmed it down should be plenty enough length now we just need to tap into that wiring harness which is gonna be fun I'm gonna have me some fun I'm gonna have me some fun Woo! that was a real doozy let me show you exactly which wires I had to hook up in order to make this work the ignition was a little a little easier to do but the clutch and accelerator pedal, I had to do a little <laughs> kind of testing to figure out which wire it was. So hopefully this will save you a lot of trouble. Okay, now the watt box, you got your ignition signal coming in to this red wire. And you can see right down here where the, the red wire is going, it is the violet and blue that is your ignition source going into the watt box and then it comes out from the orange this is what cuts the ignition 
and this is your main source. Now, this wire here is the, the same color going to your ignition coil here right at this connector. So we got that signal coming in to the red, going through the orange, back into that, that purple or violet with the blue. So I just cut that wire, it goes into the red, comes out from the orange to the ignition coil itself, and that's what cuts the ignition for your two-step as well as your no-lift shift. The other wire, not to be confused, let me pull this back a little bit, or, okay, sorry, got this heat shrink. Now you can see this is the ignition source going to the part of the coil pack that controls coil number one, essentially, in this brick of a coil. It is the blue with the violet stripe. And the only reason you're seeing some extra yellow wire here, so this is the yellow wire that goes to the number one ignition coil source, which makes it fire off that number one cylinder. Uh, just because everything's so tight, I gave myself a little extra room to work with and I just used some of this uh, additional extra uh, yellow wire that I had cut off you, that you saw a little earlier. So I just extended it, make things a little easier on myself. It is gonna be a little bit of a pain in the butt to kind of clean this up and make it look nice. However, the car started, works just fine. This is where I ended up mounting the watt box just right below the fuse box. Uh, it's still, this cable's not very long. Even sitting in the driver's seat, it is hard to plug a laptop in, but it's close enough. And I'm also able to visually see the blue blinking light. Now, I'll, I'll get into that here in a moment, but let me show you how this is wired up. So we have our ground coming up here, and I just wanted to test things. I still need to put the little eyelet in it. And <laughs> over here, here is your throttle pedal right here. You just pull this little red clip out. Let me see if I can grab it. You just pull this red clip out. And here's the connector. And I was able to pull this sheeting back, the, the wire cover. And hopefully I can focus here. And all I did was kind of pull the wiring back with my wire strippers without actually cutting the wire, just kind of exposing the wire itself. And this one, it's kind of a tight space in here. This is kind of like a, a tan with a pink. And if you go from left to right, where this red connection is, it is actually uh, the third one. So we got one, two, and then it is the third wire here. Let's see if I can get this to focus a little better. So you can see it right there. It is a third one from the left. And then last but not least, the clutch position sensor. Let's see if I can get it to focus. It's the center one, the yellow one. I just kind of jam, <laughs> jam the wire up in there because uh, I initially tried that gray and red one that was not it and ended up being the center one which is the yellow um, i imagine it has like a blue stripe i'm it's very cramped down here but that's it so now i'm going to shorten these wires up and clean everything up and i'll finish soldering things in and i'll report back well everything is installed cleaned up the best i could now let's go ahead and program this thing, make some fireballs. We'll do a little two-step testing as well as flat foot shifting. It's nighttime, so maybe we'll catch some, some flames. Who knows? Let's see. I have the Wattbox user interface pulled up, and this is one of the ways you can tell that everything is properly installed. There she is all lit up. Now if I press on the gas pedal, you're just gonna have to trust me here. Hold on, here we go. Press the gas pedal, starts blinking. 
Now if I press the clutch as well, it'll stop blinking and then blink as well. When we go into the interface here, we can hit read. So we'll hit read. Let me go ahead and change this to auto just to make sure we're all connected. All right, we're connected to the watt box. Now you see down here, we've got up. I don't have my feet on any of the pedals. So it is saying up. Now, if I press down on the gas pedal, and I come over here to read. Now the TPS down here says down. Now I've, I've let up. Now I'm gonna press the clutch. I'm gonna come over here. We'll hit read again. Now they should be flopped. I have the clutch down. And if I press both of them in. And I hit read. Both of them are reading as down. And you see here we have our voltages. So as far as launch control, I'm going to set mine to 5,500. We'll see how that works. That's about where we start really building some boost. Threshold for the TPS. In other words, what throttle percentage do you want? Down here, it has that percentage for the TPS. So I'm going to press the pedal about 80% of the way. And I want it to activate at 80%. So we'll go ahead. We'll just hold that. We'll hit read. And it's giving us 3.35. So we'll call this 3.35. Same thing up here. For our no lift shift, 3.35. That's our threshold. Uh, we'll take off auto as far as the no lift shift so i have that enabled um, we'll just leave it at 350 for now and we'll play around with that i have my ignition source uh, just other selected they do have uh, instructions and settings for for other you know for specific makes and models uh, i've already got a rev limiter set in the ECU. So I'm pretty happy with that. We'll go ahead and we'll give that a shot. We'll go ahead and we'll hit right. Right was successful. We'll hit okay. Now let's go for a little bit of a test rip. I'm gonna pull the car out of the shop here and then uh, we'll see what it does. squeaking is that stage five clutch we'll let her get up the temp and then we'll test the two-step or launch control okay we got some temp in her i'm gonna press the clutch down and then we'll hold the gas and see what it does boost she's building that's the main thing i want to know so we'll get rpms here's boost we got backing right now let's see holy crap let's see what she got up to 11 pounds i think that'll do it perfect Let's take her for a spin over here on the side street and we'll test the flat foot shifting. Okay, there's really no way for me to do this while holding a camera. So I'm gonna set you on the side of the road and see if I can't time it perfectly and do the flat. 
flat foot shift. We'll see what it does. All right, let's see if we can get some drive-by video without getting my phone stolen. <laughs> That was insane. It, uh, woof, huge difference. The car had overboost, and that was uh, shifting out of first gear into second gear. And it literally sounds like those 4th of July fireworks, those big ones you put in a tube and you light, and you hope you didn't put them in the wrong way. <laughs> Man insane that's i haven't seen that in person or experienced it so seeing all the videos really doesn't do it justice as to how loud and how much more power it just adds to you know your boost isn't dropping off i've been waiting for my boost to build up in between shifts with the size of the turbo i have on here which is a gt 3582R and it takes a while for it to build boost. It doesn't start building boost until about five grand, but I have my rev limiter set to 8200. And by the time I switch and start building boost, just it's no bueno. So, wow, insane. <laughs> So I'm happy with the outcome. The car is finally tuned nicely. Street tuning I did myself. We finally got a watt box installed for launch control, flat foot shifting. Be sure to stay tuned if you're new to the channel. Be sure to subscribe, give this video a like. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Next, we're either gonna go to Dino or we're gonna hit up the track and see what this thing does. So, we'll see you in the next video. Peace out. Woo!